Now, why are we talking about triangular diagrams in the abstract, right? A, B, C percentages. Well, it's because this is how we plot a lot of rocks and minerals, right? We look at, you know, these minerals can have a certain amount of each component. There can be a little bit of mixing happening. Um, depending on how much of each component a mineral has, it might have a different name, right? So ternary diagrams, which is what we call them in geology, are super, super common in mineralogy, right? Um, so for example, as you can see in this image, we can look at the different feldspars, feldspar compositions, right? And there's different me end members, right? Um, albite, for example, 100% albite is all the way in the lower left. 100% anorthite is in the lower right. And 100% orthoclase is in the top, right? But a lot of samples you get, it's not gonna be 100% any one of these minerals. They might be a combination. Right. Well, it might have a little bit of albite, a little bit of anorthite, a lot of orthoclase or potassium feldspar. Right. Um, now, notice that this diagram is showing you that ternary space, everything that's, you know, in this 3D space, but only the black dots and the blue is showing you what's actually possible, what actually happens um, naturally on Earth. So it's super common for albite to be shared a little bit with orthoclase for albite to be shared a little bit with anorthite, you're very, very rarely, actually, I'm not even going to say that, you're just never <laughs> going to find a mixture of anorthite and orthoclase together, right? That doesn't naturally happen. All right, often on these ternary diagrams, you won't just see the end member minerals or what's possible. You'll also see what we call tie lines. And these are these black lines, um, right, that show you know, this mixture is possible, right? It is common for an, a rock to have any percentage along this line, along that tie line. But there's also going to be a lot of white spaces, right? This miscibility gaps. And again, that's where compositions never exist in those percentages in a solid solution, right? So you're never going to find, um, let's say, 70% ferrocellite and... 20% uh, uh, CASIO3, right? Those just don't really mix well together. Um, and you can also plot a lot of other information on top of ternary diagrams, right? So here, it's not only showing the three different end members, the three different minerals that can be mixed together in a solid state solution, um, quartz, forstrite, and calcite, and showing you the temperatures that those mixtures happen. Right. So it's saying that if the magma is, you know, 14,000 degrees Celsius, these are all the possible compositions that could exist. Right. So if it's 14 degrees Celsius, you're never going to get 100% force strike. It won't happen. Right. This is this ternary diagram is showing you that. Um, now, we've been talking a lot about igneous minerals, but ternary diagrams pop up in all sorts of different areas of geology. So you might have seen it when talking about different grain sizes, right? So you collect a sample of grains, you put it in the sieve shaker, you sort it out, and you find it's this percent sand, this percent silt, this percent clay, right? You could plot that on a ternary diagram. You could also classify um, different uh, metals based on their color, right? So we know that silver is white. Copper is red, uh, gold's yellow. But what if you find like a reddish or a yellowish or a pale greenish yellow? It might be because those minerals are actually mixed together in a solid state solution. All right. Now, I went down a little rabbit hole of searching for all the different types of possible ternary diagrams to give you as an example. And the rest I'm going to show you are just fun, <laughs> right? You can do this with anything, not just geology. Um, here's the one that I think is funny about what's collected on field trips. Um, if you go out on a field trip and all you collect is rocks, you're a geologist. If all you collect is soil or all you collect is grime, you're a soil scientist. If all you collect is notes, you're probably a geophysicist. And if you collect a little bit of everything, you might be an environmental engineer. Um, when I go out, I collect a lot of everything. <laughs> um, I do collect more rocks than anything else though. So I'm, I'm a geologist, but you know, I could hang out with the engineers. Um, here's one that you might <laughs> uh, feel very acquainted with, um, talking about, you know, what education are you when you do different things? If you are just memorizing things, rote memorization, you might be a freshman, 
right? If you start thinking a little harder, you might be junior, senior. If you start thinking, what the hell was I thinking? You might be up in a graduate degree or a postdoc. Um, for all you foodies out there, uh, you could talk about foods, right? Based on their percent grease, starch, and sugar. If you've got all of those, you might have a funnel cake. If you have just starch and nothing else, you might have a pretzel. Um, and I know that those are, you know, kind of silly, but they can actually be super useful in a lot of other disciplines. So the next ones I'm going to show you are from um, political science. And I think these are fascinating, right? So here it's showing the difference between Obama and Trump and how they use Twitter, um, how many times they retweet versus like versus reply. And you can see that Obama does a lot of liking and retweeting, whereas Trump does a lot of liking and replying. Okay. But mostly they just like things. Right? Um, and this is showing Republicans and Democrats overall, right? Again, most people just like things, but Democrats are more likely to retweet, whereas Republicans are more likely to reply, right? So it's getting into the social politics of how people interact with each other and Twitter, which I think is pretty cool. Uh, and another funny one uh, <laughs> for beginner birders, how do you identify a bird, right? How much does it look like an eagle versus a duck versus an ostrich? Okay. All right, so that was my little rabbit hole. Thank you for coming along with me. Um, and you know what? I'm going to give bonus points to anybody who finds the coolest ternary diagram that I haven't seen before. Go for it. Bring it to class.